This Democratic convention now in the history books. Joe Biden, officially the nominee, and he's hoping the convention will give him that bounce everyone looks for towards the White House. Over the course of four nights, the Democratic Party put out its biggest stars. Let me be as honest and clear as I possibly can. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't. And the consequences of that failure are severe. Let's get into what we've learned and seen this week. Jason Johnson, professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University, and Aaron Haynes, editor-at-large of the 19th, join us. They're both MSNBC contributors. Uh, good evening. Uh, how'd you guys like tonight? I guess uh, Jason first. Uh, I thought it was good, and, and I, I don't tend to be overly impressed by convention speeches. Usually by now, in real time, we've been trapped in an arena for 12 hours, and you're just waiting for it to be over. Uh, but, but watching this in a two-hour block was really interesting. I thought Joe Biden gave one of the most impressive speeches I've ever seen him give. It was honest. It was authentic. It was a rallying cry. It wasn't just sort of policy. It was like, we can get this done. Come run into a burning building with me. Uh, so I was impressed. I think for, for not just the challenge of putting together a good convention, but putting together the first virtual convention in American history, this was a really good job by the Democrats. As, uh, as Swiss Beats says, Jason, zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah. <laughs> There was I mean, a lot of that. There was a lot of that. And, and, and well made. <laughs> Aaron? Yeah, Jason, Jason is not easily impressed. That's true. Uh, listen, I think that this was yeah. a week that really did kind of maximize the moment that we're in, uh, you know, fr from start to finish. Uh, who among us is not, you know, getting accustomed to Zoom life? And, and then ending uh, tonight, you saw the ticket, you know, on stage, everybody, you know, in masks. Uh, really just kind of a sign of the times. But look, I mean, family was also front and center, which I know is, is on a lot of people's minds from, you know, Joe Biden introducing, you know, having his family introduce him, Kamala Harris's family that introduced her last night. Uh, the tribute to Bo Biden, which was certainly a very sure. moving moment, uh, you know, and that just really kind of brings home for a lot of people kind of the, the, the kinds of themes that really bind us together as, as Americans. So getting kind of past uh, the political in, in, into the personal. I think that, that this uh, convention was meant to accomplish three things, introducing people to Joe Biden, questioning, uh, you know, uh, the people watching about who they are a, as Americans, and, and just underscoring the importance of voting to a range of, of, of uh, Americans uh, and, and just the urgency of this moment. Mm. Uh, again, now, starting with Aaron and then back to Jason, I want to play a little bit of what we saw from the other up-and-coming Democrats and former rivals to Joe Biden. Uh, you know, Washington struggled to learn lessons from 2016 when it came to underestimating Donald Trump and fact-checking him and all that, but also when it came to just stopping the game of the predictions and the polling and the punditry and listening to the voters and listening to the activists. And I say that because early on there was a lot of smart talk in Washington about who the Democratic stars were going to be. Um, I think we all remember very few people in the middle of this campaign or after Iowa were putting many, many bets on Joe Biden, who was the nominee, um, or uh, a Mr. Andrew Yang, who was also an untraditional candidate and galvanized way more support when starting out with zero name ID. Um, and I, I mentioned that because the Biden folks initially didn't even have a speaking slot for him. Uh, then he talked about it publicly. Then Yang Gang got excited. Then they gave it to him, which was probably smart. That's where they landed. Yeah. So let's look at some of those folks uh, and then going first to Aaron for, for what this part meant. Take a look. Donald Trump's ignorance and incompetence have always been a danger to our country. COVID-19 was Trump's biggest test. He failed miserably. To everyone who supported other candidates in the primary, and to those who may have voted for Donald Trump in the last election. The future of our democracy is at stake. We must give this country, our country, a chance to recover. And recovery is only possible with a change of leadership and new ideas. I trust Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to guide us toward that better future. Because I've seen up close their empathy and their capacity. Aaron. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, regardless of what, what Washington has learned in these past four years, I think what you saw was that Joe Biden has learned some things. I mean, you have to remember, Joe Biden was somebody who was on the campaign trail for Hillary Clinton. And I think that he took a lot of lessons from that experience and, frankly, from, from running for president for the better part of three decades. Uh, you know, pull, look at how much faster Bernie Sanders was on board with Joe Biden as opposed to four years ago. And, and really, he kind of rallied all of his, his rivals uh, to, to supporting him uh, pretty much uh, as soon as their campaigns were suspended. Uh, and then you, you saw a lot of them this week really giving pretty full-throated endorsements of, of his candidacy and, and the Biden-Harris ticket headed into November. Now, there were certainly uh, some glaring omissions. I certainly saw a lot of people uh, wishing that, that Julian Castro, for example, had had uh, a much bigger, uh, you know, platform to, to, to uh, make the case to uh, some of the younger and, and more progressive voters in the party who, who Joe Biden is going to need to shore up to be part of that coalition that, that he's going to need to beat an incumbent president, period. But this president in particular uh, in the middle of a pandemic. But, but really, I, I do think that it is a testament to um, the, the lessons that, that Joe Biden learned uh, in, in the past four years and, and maybe even from before that. Jason. Yeah, Ari, I, I must admit, one of the most impressive things that I saw tonight throughout the entire week, you know, Bernie gave a speech and, and Elizabeth Warren gave her speech and had Black Lives Matter spelled in the background with the kids' blocks, which is great. But tonight when they sort of had the, like, the real housewives reunion of all the people that Joe Biden had beaten, I mean, only the only thing missing was, like, Andy Cohen and a bunch of chairs. To have them all basically reminiscing fondly about the guy who beat them and how they're going to support him to run for—I don't think I've ever seen that before. I have watched almost every convention since I was a kid in my 20s, and, and it was amazing yeah, to all see all of his former rivals. I'm sorry? I yeah. said, yeah, I agree, not all at well, once. Again, yeah, that's I mean, a Zoom, yeah. Zoom part. Yeah, yeah, not all at once, yeah. Uh, that, that's a total, yeah, that's that was, totally that was amazing to see all of yeah. them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and to but have them know, sort of—they I mean, were that, reminiscing, they were laughing, she's a great guy. Yeah, that's, but that's really, you know, what, yes. what the Zoom effect of this convention is like, right? Like, in a convention setting, normally, if, you know, we were all outside and, like, in an arena, uh, you maybe would have seen them in right. a parade on a stage, you know, giving, giving their supporters yeah. maybe in the audience a chance to clap for them one last time. But, but that wasn't possible this year, right? And so, uh, you know, so, yeah, so then you get this kind of round robin moderated by, you know, Cory Booker was playing Andy Cohen tonight, I guess. And, and, but, but, yes, a much more <laughs> collegial kind of vibe, right? And, 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 and then, you know, with mm -hmm. them all kind of um, talking about, um, you know, the star of, of, of this season, uh, Joe Biden. Well, you know, we learned something from each of you with your analysis and some of the points you've made, including uh, some of what people might have thought a lot about, uh, the Zoom, the Castro. Uh, but we also learned that you're both Real Housewives fans. Absolutely. Uh, yes, please uh, contact me on she's, Twitter. She's a daughter of Atlanta. I watch the show. Politics. <laughs> we need Is it a Southern man. thing? We need, we Doesn't need, everybody love that? I mean, that show's popular throughout the no, country. No, no. There, there, there's housewives for everybody. Okay. Potomac, New Jersey, Beverly Hills. Get at me. Whoever, whoever, you, whoever you're following, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look. Andy Cohen, uh, be ready for the calls. Aaron Haynes, Jason Johnson. Again, nice exactly. to see both of you. We